Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome again to the TNM platform. Um, as usual, um, we have a panel, and the topic of the day is the Nigerian Naira crisis. It's um, it's a topic that I think we should talk about. Um, at the moment, there's rumors everywhere why this crisis is on. We've got um, people saying it's a plan. We've got, got other people saying it's possibly trying to move to a cashless society. Um, but we'll find out um, based on our own opinions here. Let me introduce my guests at the moment. I've got um, Jude Baye. He's a business analyst based in the UK. And I've got um, Goki Oluyede, who is a, a lawyer based in Abuja. I'll go straight to um, the business analyst, Jude. Jude, what would you say, um, in your own opinion, is the reason for this um, unfortunate activity going on in our country where there seems to be a lack of seamless transition from the old notes to the new notes? Sorry, I was just on mute there. Um, thanks, thanks for having me. Truth be told, I think it boils down to the same old, same old Nigerian issue of not planning before execution. Um, in my line of work, you would not only plan, they say measure twice, cut once. So apparently, the possibilities around what could go wrong with this currency change were not all taken into consideration. One of those possibilities is sabotage that could happen because um, one of the conspiracy theories we have is that we have politicians who have stockpiled tons and tons of cash. Now, if you're changing the currency, you're impacting them negatively because they cannot now pull out the old currency to do the kind of exchanges they would ordinarily want to do. So there's the possibility, as always, that those people would work with bankers to frustrate this effort. That should have been taken into consideration and a plan to remediate that if it happens should have been put in place. Um, the feel as we have is that that's one of the key problems. The bankers are receiving the new currency, refusing to relate, release it because they're hoarding it and now pretty much selling it. So I think it bore, it's a lesson for, for Nigeria and Nigeria entirely. If you want to implement something, especially something as massive as this one, the currency change, there should be considerations of what could go wrong. How exactly are we going to do this? What are the dependencies? What are the critical success factors? What do we have to look out for to see that this happens seamlessly? Um, I see that we have, uh, I, I guess that's the financial advice so we've been waiting for. So I'll leave it there for now. Uh, since there's a shortage of time. Thank you, Jude. You've just dropped some value there. You've talked about planning. Um, you've talked about um, shortages of new notes. Um, planning is a very key point. Um, better planning would actually have made this transition smoother. Um, let me introduce um, Alaji Shaibu Idris. Um, he's a financial consultant based in. Um, Nigeria. Um, Alaji Shaibu Idris has experience in um, financial matters and you would often catch him on NTA, you'd catch him on um, Channels TV some early mornings talking about money policies and um, the financial structure of Nigeria. It's a pleasure to have you um, on, on the platform again, Alaji. Um, just before I go to Alaji and give him the floor, um, our lawyer, Goki Uliyade, who is based in um, Abuja, how do you see the situation on ground? Um, is it true that there's money being, that Naira is being sold? What, what's the atmosphere in the capital at the moment? Hello, everyone. Um, okay, so David, thanks. Uh, I can't say that I've um, personally experienced, you know, uh, um, the outright sale of Naira. 
at the black market. But I can't say that I have experienced um, having to pay an exorbitant and you know uh, increased rate for um, getting money from the POS operators. So once that happened, once uh, we had to get twenty thousand naira in cash, and we ended up having to pay four thousand naira to get twenty thousand. So there's a discount of uh, what twenty uh, percent? Is that yes? So obviously, and that's that's also arbitrary, you know, by the POS operators taking advantage of the situation we're in. Now regarding the, the black outright black market sale of naira. Um, someone was saying to me, and who I consider to be credible, you know, yesterday that if you if you went to the black market operators now, and you wanted to, if you want to buy, they will ask you, do you want to buy dollar or do you want to buy naira? Wow. You know, for the first time, naira is being sold at <laughs> the black market. <laughs> you know, I just found that to be so, you know, ridiculous. The other thing that I heard is that um, if you were, if you wanted to buy dollars at the black market and you have cash, new naira cash, they're willing to sell it to you at five hundred naira per dollar. Whereas if you were going to do a transfer, you would have, you'd have to pay seven hundred and fifty naira per dollar. So you can see the massive uh, arbitrage there, the massive, uh, you know, uh, uh, space there for someone to deal in. So there are all kinds of things going on now that are so bizarre. They are unprecedented in that regard. Now, these are not things that I've experienced personally, but like I said, I've got, I've got that from a credible source who, who says he experienced it personally. So you may want to you know, uh, verify that as well. Now, I just wanted to pick up on something that Jude said while he was making his uh, opening comments there regarding the issue of um, of uh, saboteurs and all that. I actually think that the, is, if there was any sabotage, if there's been any sabotage, it's been, um, it's been um, made possible by the government itself, because by all accounts, the government has taken out about 200, they muffed up about two, 2 trillion Naira worth of cash. And they printed only about 300 billion Naira worth of cash. Now. That is unrefuted at the moment. And that information has been in the public space for you know, upwards of a week. So if it's untrue, someone would have come out to say so. So any time that you do that sort of thing, what you're doing essentially is immediately you're creating a, a shortage. And when there's a shortage, markets will spring up. It's the same thing that we see in our petrol sector. Every time there's a shortage of petrol, the petrol station will not have petrol, but the guy with his uh, jerry can on the side of the road, close to the petrol station, will have petrol to sell to you. So obviously <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be people who will, uh, who will take advantage of those situations. So once you create a shortage, there's room for black market. Now, once there's black market, it becomes profitable to keep that situation in play. So that's another challenge we're likely to face now you know, there'll be people who now don't even want the system to go back to normal. So let me just stop there. Right? I'm going to hold the time because I have so much to say about this. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Koke. Um, Alaji, interesting conversation, interesting um, what uh, Goke has said there. Now, I want to ask you, um, especially partaking to the, uh, pertaining to the economy, what is the economic situation of Nigeria at the moment? Is it down? Is it up? And how can we rectify this situation based on your knowledge of the financial institutions? Uh, well, uh, David, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, uh, fellow discussant. And uh, let me start by tendering my unreserved apologies for joining a little late. I, you know, I live in Lagos and I thought uh, 20, 30 minutes will take me from my office to my house. Unfortunately, I got, uh, you know, trapped in the traffic. So my sincere apologies. Uh, Bukin, uh really hit the nail on the head and uh, 
clearly he is right in the middle of uh, you know what we are all experiencing he he shows that he is in nigeria and indeed he is feeling and seeing what we are all seeing now uh, to your question david i'm not sure if there is anybody that will tell you that the nigerian economy as at now is not in crisis and uh, this is not an not a natural catastrophe like the earthquake that struck in turkey and syria or the flood that we had some couple of months back or the other natural disasters that have afflicted other parts of the world this is man-made and it appears uh you know it's intentional uh believe you me sincerely uh when we had the first uh you know opportunity to discuss this policy of uh, naira redesign and uh, i was part of the discussion and what we concluded were simply put a good policy timely because we have not tinkered with our currency for the last 20 years however the timing of the implementation is wrong this is a country that is facing through enormous amount of challenges we have had flood last year we have been having experiences of insecurity from, if you like, from Maiduguri down to Lagos, which part of Nigeria can we really, really say is 100% safe? We are facing general elections. We are also planning to have a population census. And at the same time, we want to redesign currency and we want to achieve it within a period of 45 days. In a country where the banking penetration, the last time I checked the figures, we are less than 45% of Nigerians that have banking accounts. So how do you how 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 can you possibly achieve this? And we concluded at that uh, you know forum that clearly there was need for the Central Bank of Nigeria to have a rethink, particularly in the modus operandi that it intended to use to achieve a success of this policy. Of course, uh, our submissions uh, went and they didn't listen. They went ahead to, to pronounce and to commence uh, you know, the program. After one or two days of commencement of the program, one or two newspapers, I remember in particular, I read the punch. The punch newspaper reported that, oh, banks are facing cash shortage. There is cash crunch of the new notes. And even though I felt strongly that it was a little too early and too uh, too harsh a conclusion just two days after the commencement of the scheme it turns out to be that the central bank never ever plan to print or mint the currencies and exchange the old note with the new one The figures rolled out by the governor of Central Bank claiming that, you know, at 2013, there was about 1.3, 1.5 trillion Naira in circulation. By last year, 2022, we have over 3 trillion Naira in circulation. This is one of the reasons why we have inflation and they need to fight corruption. They need to fight uh, banditry and payment of ransom and, and, and. Now, when you strangulate an economy, is it the best way to fight corruption? Where were the gatekeepers of our treasuries when the monies were cutted away? Where were they? Now, 
you 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 close the door uh like uh was this Mochi robinson or don william said you shut the door outside uh you shut the wall outside the door what what have you achieved now like Goke has said he hasn't experienced i have experienced life that i went to change to to get money i went to the banking hall innocently walked into the bank and i thought i could get money that was about a week and a half ago in Lagos, and I was told, hey, we are we are not allowed to, to attend to customers. We can't give cash over the counter. So you have to go and join the queue at ATM. I met an elderly woman, and I asked her, mom, are you on the queue? She said, yes, I am, but I can't stand on the queue because of my age. I've taken a number. What is your number? She was number 106 on the queue. 106. This is minimum age, I guess, for that woman is 70 years. Do we really think that the God we worship will forgive us to punish elderly? And this woman said, we need food in the house. And there is nobody to come and do this. I had to do it myself. But another you know, instance, I desperately needed to make some payments, David. I tried and tried and tried until I could try no more to make transfers either through the USSD, that is the universal short code, or through the internet. It refused to go. I had to take a walk personally to a banking hall. Guess what I saw? I had just 1,000 Naira notes in my pocket. I saw a young man came into the banking hall crying, saying he couldn't have dinner yesterday and he did not have breakfast because he didn't have money and he wanted to eat and he couldn't do the transfer and he was there to collect his uh, money you no know, matter the amount so that he could eat. And the young man was crying. This scene, I personally, witness them and I cried. I went back to my office, I shed tears. I wish I had more than 1,000 Naira to give. I couldn't give the person that 1,000 Naira. It pains me that I couldn't help him because one of my prayers every day is, God, whenever you, get, you give me the life to go out, when I see anybody in need, give me the opportunity and the capacity to help. But on that day, I couldn't help. David, if there is no financial intermediation in an economy, what will that mean to the system? It's a total collapse. That brings me. Collapse. That brings me to um, the transition in the in the conversation. Um, Jude, you reside in the UK um, just like I do. Um, I'm sure daily you're on the um, internet. Um, there's loads of videos trawling all over the whole place now. Um, if you have WhatsApp groups, you can see videos of unrest in Benin, videos of unrest in Ibadan, video of unrest in um, Delta State. Um, how do you think this is going to impact the elections, which are just but um, a week or so away? Mm. Uh, very good. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry, Alaji. Just, just before I respond to the question directly, let me let me respond. If you're the company, Alaji, balls they're talking about. In this part of the world, the government has a responsibility to its people, and that's why, if you've listened to the news lately, you find that the United Kingdom has changed prime ministers, the very most inside of the past few months. That's because if you're not delivering service to the people, then you need to go. But that said, it boils down to the issue of planning. If, like Alaji has said, we're well aware that 45% of Nigerians do not have uh, banking facilities, how did you plan to make the society cashless? If you have done the planning, that's a critical success factor. So there should have been an enlightenment campaign. There should have been a drive to see that Nigerians have accounts. That's just one of the critical success factors. 
Again, timing, like Elijah said, is critical to success. So how did you choose your timing? If indeed you want to fight corruption, then you need to see to it that corruption does not effectively fight back and do more damage than you plan because it becomes counterproductive. But that said, um, let me go to your question on the elections. I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm beginning to tend to believe what Goke has said about the fact that the government seems to have done this on purpose. You have mopped up billions and trillions and you're printing a few billions. What's the plan? You have purposely created a shortage. And if you create that shortage in, in this kind of frustration, hardship, people like Elijah has very, very graphically described, people are in pain. Are you really sure that they're that willing to go out and vote on Saturday? It's definitely going to impact the elections negatively. And ultimately, politicians are driven by electoral circles. So if we lose the opportunity to pick the right people that we want to pick for the next four years, we've gone into slavery as a result of this policy. So you see the knock-on effect of this simple act of grave stupidity on the part of government and in the implementation. Fingers crossed. That's what they, they, they've always taught us to do in, in, in Nigeria, very sadly. So we'll wait and see. Well, Jude. Um, sorry, David. Go no, on, go I mean, on. Interesting. Uh -huh. I'd like you to, to come in straight away. Thank you. So, so, Jude, you know, you have actually credited the government and the people who have, um, who have um, implemented this this policy at this time, you actually credited, the, you are uh, accrediting them with the most, how can I say, you're, you're with um, benevolent intentions, you know, by even assuming that the problem is with planning. Actually, I take a, an opposite view. What you're seeing unfold is the plan. <laughs> is, this is actually the plan because it is not for, you know, this government has been in power for seven years. It's on the eve of its exit, so close to elections. This could have been done at the beginning of 2022, right? It could have been done in 2019 before COVID. But as Alaji said, we had to go through COVID, then followed by flooding. And now, and all of that with the, uh, what's it called, insecurity, already, you know, being a challenge to the economy and all that. You now wait till the eve of an election that you were the one that called the timing. It's not like you did not know to implement this. This is a, a preemptive strike now. You know, it's, a, it's actually a preemptive, is a, is a um, in my view, is actually a strategic attack. It's not for lack of planning. What is part of what has from been said? So, because a lot of narratives have now spun up around what has happened, and part of what has been said is that there actually is, and these are some of these people that have spoken are not non-entities. These are also people who travel the corridors of power. So, when you have sitting state governors saying certain things, and you've got this presidential aspirant of the ruling party saying that there is a conspiracy to sabotage his success at the elections. Then you have to sit up and listen. And it's been said that in Nigeria, we have the president and we have the presidency. So when things happen, you have to ask yourself, is this the president or is this the presidency? Because we have had that happen in the past where somebody was being told that so a high level, uh, high ranking uh, civil servant, Baba Chalawala, I believe he was at the time, he was being told something that the presidency said something. He said, who is the presidency? You understand? So look, there are other forces at play in this whole thing. This is unprecedented. Okay. And the magnitude of the effect, look, did not happen overnight. It has taken time for it to get to this point where people are actually blocking expressways and burning tires. 
So it, so it has grown to this point. And today now, our president now finally gets up to make a statement that is contrary to a Supreme Court judgment. Owning what is going on on the one hand, and then making, giving a directive that on the face of it may look like it's supposed to uh, you know, bring a little bit of comfort, but it is directly opposed to the Supreme Court judgment. So we're seeing a situation where in Nigeria now, we have a, we have a dictatorial executive whose hands are slowly coming out of the glove and who want to implement something. And as I said, there have been different conspiracy theories, but that it's all politically motivated. I've, I've so I'll just leave it at that. I've heard the conspiracy theory saying that um, the administration has actually put this in um, progress so as to scuttle the elections by way of causing unrest and being able to introduce martial law. Um, I don't know if this is the case, but- Martial also... law or, or, or an, interim, uh, an interim national government. I'll, I'll throw, I'll that's throw the, the floor. That's the other, that's the other um, version of that same conspiracy theory. Let me throw the floor open to um, Alaji based on the same question, how this is impacting on the political um, atmosphere and what will happen in the next week? Uh, thank you very much, uh, David. I think uh, generally the two discussions, Jude and uh, Bokea have done justice uh, to the conspiracy theory as far as uh, that, it is, uh, that is concerned. However, uh, my take is the dear candidate of the All Progressive People's Congress, or whatever they call themselves, APC, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinimbu, Jagabano, Asuaju, I believe shouldn't have even made the statement he made as far as the conspiracy theory is concerned. There is a committee that we have in Nigeria, and that committee is quite vibrant and strong, intra-party uh, alliance led by one Yabagi. Uh, this challenge that we are having today, will it only affect the APC? My candid answer, my candid opinion is no, it will affect PDP, it will affect, uh, affect Labour Party, it will affect NNPP, that is Concourse Party, and it will affect uh, APC. Maybe it would have been good if they come together and even for that purpose, forget about uh, their differences in terms of contesting for the same position and face uh, the government, whether the president or the presidency or what have you. Uh, fast forward, what Gokia has said, it baffles uh, also my imagination. This morning, I didn't even know that Mr. President was going to address Nigerians. I woke up a little late and uh, reading through the papers and I saw that oh, there was an address by Mr. President. And I read through it. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm also not an ignoramus person as far as who is concerned. You have a sovereign president under democratic dispensation, granting you know, a national address and standing on judgment of the Supreme Court of the land. This, this is scary. This, this so, is serious. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I sometimes I wonder what kind of uh, blood that runs through us as Nigerians. Things that ordinarily would have made someone to capitulate and leave the seat where he or she is sitting, we just tolerate. And as if nothing happens. This lack of planning or implementation of this design in a same environment, someone somehow, somewhere would have resigned his or her appointment. And if he or she doesn't resign, somebody somehow, somewhere would have fired him or her. But we are so tolerant. It's just life continues. 
You go to a POS guy, an agent uh, trying to give you 5,000 Naira, he takes 5,000 Naira out of your uh, account and he gives you 4,000 Naira. And we just, and we, we don't care. And at the same time, when, you know, when Central Bank is saying they want to uh, increase banking habits, you want to make a transfer. If you are lucky, the transfer goes, they charge you 50 Naira uh, stamp duty, they charge you tax, VAT on that. So is that encouraging you to open a bank account or discouraging you to maintain a bank account? Let me uh, touch on the election day. Now we are facing, and we are likely going to have an election on the 25th of the, of the month in about nine days. David, Jude, and Goke, can we just close our eyes for a second and think of, you know, ad hoc staff recruited by INEC to man polling units? Let me take Lagos where I, I sit and where I live. If I have an ad hoc staff living in Nyaba, he or she is posted say, to a polling unit in Ukorodu. How will he or she move from Yaba to Ukorodu and from Ukorodu town to the ward level where he, is, he or she is supposed to serve and from the ward to the polling unit? They will have to pay. So where will they get the money to move around? If you say everybody must use bank account, you either use internet to make transfers or you use the US, USSD call. I can liken it to a road that is made for say 20 cars to pass at a time. And there is a crisis and a rush and 200 cars are going to pass. What will happen? Accident? Commotion? The system, the system crisis? Will crash. So this is yeah. that's what, why, even if Central Bank wanted us to, to increase our banking habits, why didn't they plan well? Why didn't they bring technology experts to expand you know, the band network and the sizes of the system? And what have you? I, I'm telling you, this afternoon, I made not less than seven attempts to make transfer from my bank account to three other you know, uh, you know, uh, colleagues of mine that I needed to make uh, transfers to, to other, not just one bank, three other banks. I got so frustrated and I'm leaving Lagos tomorrow, traveling to Kanu. So I had to write a check to send somebody tomorrow morning to go and do this transfer. What kind of things is this? Alaji, can I, do you subscribe to this conspiracy theory that the government has done this on purpose? Because I'm beginning to believe what Goke has said. It, I don't think they are that daft. It, they, they can't be so stupid as to have planned in this way, because it looks like this was there was absolutely no planning. Is it done on purpose? Or is it well, a question it, of will, a lack of planning? Will, will it be a surprise, though, Jude, with the Nigerian president uh, presidents, I beg your pardon. It's not really a surprise. Um, if you look at 1999, was it? Um, or the, the era of MKO Abiola. Um, if you look at other elections, even local elections, where there's always been sabotage, it's not, um, it shouldn't be a surprise. As much as we can't believe it, we also mm -hmm. have videos where um, credible people are saying a sitting governor has 22 billion naira in the old notes sitting in his house. Not one person has investigated that. Not one person has called the governor to book. Everything is still going on as normal. It's it's in the ethos. You you can you, you can see the video. You can't tell me that all the videos are conspiracy theories. And there's a sitting governor of one uh, one northern um, state who said that this was sabotage to prevent his party, which is the ruling party, um, from from succeeding. Anyway, as much as there's a crisis, go on, go on, Alaji. Let me let you come. You see, uh, I, I just want to respond to you. You see, what uh, I have this feeling that uh, Wokes' position uh, will be gospel. 
uh, like the, cons the other conspiracy, conspiracy theory that I found uh, to be a little now sitting for me to, to accommodate is the fact that uh, one party is being targeted. Uh, are we saying that only Aswaju has money to buy votes? Who no, Alaji. Had... Alaji is a little bit more sophisticated and nuanced than that. Mm. Of course, it's affecting the entire um, political system and the electoral process. The point is, which party is in power now that is causing this problem? It's APC. The yeah. idea is that people will react against APC. And people will say, ah, ah, if this APC is causing this kind of hardship to us now, ah, we can't take this anymore. You know that it was, there was something similar to this that happened around um, the time in 2015. But it was different in that sense, because at that time, Boko Haram had now almost overrun Abuja. Close mm. to the election. Do you remember they had to yeah, uh, postpone the election by, was, by six weeks? Campaign, that was a campaign issue that what part of what uh, led to the downfall of... Uh, Precisely. Mm -hmm. So they are trying to mm. precipitate that kind of uh, um, a, a crisis or create that kind of environment this close to the elections so that it will have such an impact on people. The backlash will be that Look at what this evil, uh, wicked government has done to us. Let's vote them out. And voting them out means voting APC out. Yeah, voting against. So that uh, is the actual. So it's not about it's not about targeting someone that you can't buy votes or you can buy votes. Okay. Okay. Right. I, I I I didn't think uh, along that line. Uh, thank you very much for for the education. Uh, but I I I sincerely believe that there could be some level of credence as far as the conspiracy theory is concerned uh, uh, along the line that, okay, maybe there will not be an election and there will be an interim government or a uh, state of emergency or any kangaroo arrangement that, uh, you know, somebody somehow, somewhere uh, may be planning. But what I'm saying is, you know, the political class needs to be a little bit more sophisticated uh, Aswaju, Bola, Metinimbu, uh, Rabi, Musa, Konkoso, Peter, Obi, and Atiku Abubakar, they know one another. Uh, for crying out loud, the person who became a savior to Atiku Abubakar in 2007 was Aswaju, Bola, Metinimbu, that gave him a platform to run for presidency under the AC and the AC and then as uh, the party. So why, why why couldn't they come together to to unite and um, fight uh, you know the, whoever may be behind this? And it could not be the president. Could be the presidency as, as you have said. And in some quarters they say the cabal or whatever they are called. The, the, the fact remains, I, I, I want to say that uh, the political class needs to be a little more sagacious and more, you know, a little smarter than uh, what we are uh, seeing right now. Alaji, that's a solution. This, is, this brings us to the exact point where we find solutions. So, for example, what you are saying is, if, even if it's... Um, almost too late for that, um, or egos we, will clash. A solution would be for the political parties to come together um, to fight against this as a united front. That's a very good solution. Um, let's go into more analysis of solutions to this problem. I know um, we're all four here, but... Um, I believe that the capacity of the people I have on this platform at the moment, one or two or three solutions can be preferred. So Jude, again, I'll open with you. Um, what do you think should happen to solve this situation that we find in Naira in? The, um, the expectation that politicians will come together. I'm sorry, it sounds like wishful thinking. 
Mm -hmm. The politicians we have in Nigeria today are too self-seeking, too self-centered, uh, and demonic to consider anything above their personal interests. And so all that is happening is Ashiwaji wants to be president by all means. Atiku Abubakar wants to be president by all means. Um, so Kwan Kwaso, Peter Obi, they all want to be president. And so who is going to give in to the other? How are they going to possibly come together? What is going to be on the table for each person? That is why it looks like that is not going to happen. In 93, when uh, we had the whole uh, Abiola on pass, one of the things that happened continually was that you had groups of Nigerians taking Nigeria to court under a military administration. I think we should go back to that drawing board because Nigeria is at war. It just looks like it's sane. But Nigeria is, is in a situation that's worse than many war-torn countries. It's almost worse than the situation it was in during the Abacha uh, junta. So I think a good idea would be for Nigerians, different organizations, like even the TNN, to begin to take the federal government to court on several grounds and stunt, uh, frustrate a lot of these uh, economically inimical policies. Somebody's gone to court to say, well, we need to extend the time for the change of the Naira. For example, somebody needs to go to court, like a station of better Nigerians went to court at one time. We felt it wasn't for good, good reasons, but they succeeded in, in, in doing, achieving a lot for themselves. It was negative. So we have to begin to have come together as power groups and take the government to court and compel them to put Nigerians first. Otherwise, what Goke has said could possibly happen. A situation when Nigerians in such crisis that they say, well, and um, what's happening is that elections can't hold under these circumstances. Uh, this government has expired. So what do we do? Have an international government. And from one cl one's clap, it gets into a proper dancing. And before we know what is happening, we have another military interregnum that Nigeria doesn't need at this time. Nigeria is sitting on a keg of gunpowder. We need to be really careful. Thank you very much, oh, Jude. Okay. Um, go, so if I can, yeah. go on. Yes. Uh, solution. I, I just solution. Going, I was just going to, yeah, I was going to jump in and say, all right, so for solution, first you have to correctly define the problem. Now, I think that if we don't recognize what the problem is, then we're just going to, um, you know, we're, we're going to think we came up with the solution only until we apply it and we find out it doesn't fit. So the problem now that we have is not so much, is not so much even just the Naira situation because the Naira situation is a symptom of the problem. The problem we have is the typical problem that has, that has recurred in Nigerian political history, which is the problem of people who have been in power, being close to power for a length of time, who have now and who have been able to um, practice a great deal of impunity along the way, right? And they've been able to get away with it consistently. Not now, is hubris really, not now recognizing that you know, when, when, they, when, they, when they suddenly find that their time is coming to an end, they feel that they have the power to actually impose their will on Nigeria. And we've seen it again and again, starting from military rule. You know, we call from Abacha to uh, uh, basically after the Italian governments and all of that, we call from Abacha to uh, Obasanjo, right? Obasanjo didn't want to leave power now. He went to third, third, uh, third term plan. Third agenda. At the, at the end, he had to be fought and frustrated. After our OBJ, we had uh, Jonathan effectively. At the time that it became clear that, ah, you know, it came to the end where it was becoming obvious that they would not win the election. There was an attempt to scuttle the election right in front of us. Right, and if it hadn't been that Jonathan himself, because the people around him now didn't want the, the thing to move away from them, if it hadn't been that Jonathan himself suddenly just decided nobody's is a uh, election is not worth anybody's blood, and he decided to give it up, right? They were ready to plunge Nigeria into crisis. We are faced with the same thing again. It's the same thing as in when Eradua was ill. When Eradua was ill at the time, you know they were hiding it from us so that they could perpetuate their, their, their access to power, the people who are close to him. Our, a whole country's president became someone that we had to be hearing from third parties, whether it was alive or not, until the man eventually passed. 
So that is what we're seeing again. That is the actual problem. The actual problem is not Naira uh, design or change of whatever. For me, having defined that problem that way, honestly, my own view is that Nigerian citizens have to grit their teeth, go through whatever we will have to go through now and make sure that these elections hold and make sure that the people, um, the people uh, supervising the election are accountable in every polling unit, at every ward, in every state, right? To ensure that the elections actually hold. It is critically important. Is that practical though? It, it, is, it is practical. Will be. It, is, it, is. it is practical, I believe. That's a very fantastic solution. So hold the elections, get a change of government, and let the polity be a bit more stable. Yeah, Alaji, David, David, yes. Sorry, go on. just one more thing. Jude, go on. just to just to speak to the, what Jude said about it being practical. It's going to be only practical where there's advocacy towards this. It is when people like yourself and myself and the in quote you know, elite of uh, our, uh, uh, um, and, and then even our political elite, right? Start to count, shout, uh, uh, tell people that listen, no matter what happens, let us make sure we go and vote. It's only on Saturday. You know, it's only, uh, what's it called? It's like nine days it's a, a week. It's a few days away. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, it's just nine days. So that's what we need to be reiterating. That people, so if, please, if we could do it is nine years, it is not if, if we could have end SARS spontaneous reaction, why wouldn't we able to, to, to have this? Exactly. Ab absolutely. Alaji. So solutions. Um obviously with I, the elections, I, 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 we connect both. Go on. I think Go on, basically, basically, uh the, the, the two guys once again are uh, spot on, you know, Nigerians need to, to take uh the, their destinies in their own hands. We need to, to be sincere, we need to be passionate, and we to be we need to be challenging our leaders, irrespective of uh who they may be and where they may come from. Uh I, I, I sincerely believe even if the political class are so divided now that they cannot come together to fight this policy, where is corporate Nigeria? The economy is bleeding. Companies are not selling and they have to pay salaries, they have to pay electricity bill, they have to pay so much. And the economy is running aground. Where are the members of corporate Nigeria? Where are the people from the civil society and the BMOs, the business member groups? Why can't we come together and say, hey, enough is enough. We don't want this nonsense. We're not asking for a catastrophe. We're not asking for a revolution. All we're asking for is do the right thing at the right time and choose the right people. Here we are, gentlemen. We have a governor of Central Bank of Nigeria who is supposed to be the commander in chief as far as the economy is concerned. But this gentleman was an opponent of Asiwaju at the primary election. Yes, his name was not there at the ballot because he chickened out early, but the fact remains he had an interest. So could it be? that he is the fifth columnist that is orchestrating this policy with a view to get him uh, at uh, Tinimbu or who? So we, we, we Nigerians have to take the, our destiny in our own hands. And there is no better time than now. Excellent. We could go on and on, but as you know, with the um, TNN podcast, it's always a um, run for just an hour or short of an hour. Um, I want to thank you all um, for being here. Um, Goke, thank you for sacrificing a bit of time watching your favorite um, team, Manchester United, play. Um, Alaji, <laughs> thank you for um, making, making it home on time and joining us. Jude, I know you're a very busy man up here. Um, thank you so much. 
audience, you've had it, um, the crisis. We could, this is a topic that we could go on up on through till after the elections even. But let's take away some key facts here. We've established possibilities of conspiracy theories. We've established that there's unrest in the land and there's been solutions preferred. Um, the basic truth is grit your teeth, bear it for just a little while more, nine days, get out there and vote, vote for the right people because when you have the right people in, you will never regret that. Your country will take itself back. Corporate bodies, you've heard it, come together, form pressure groups. Even when there's a new government in power, everybody has to hold them accountable. Better planning, involve diaspora, involve the elite of our generation. Um, the people in power have to understand that at some point, um, there has to be a turn in the tide. Enough said for today. I appreciate everybody for coming around. And um, I'm, I'm going to try and get this out as soon as possible, barely nine days to go. Um, I believe this has been very interesting and worth, uh, worth, it is worth listening to. I'm sure anybody who listens to it will pick up quite a few values from um, the podcast. I want to thank you all so much again. And um, any last words? I can give a minute each to everybody. Uh, what's your message to the general populace? Uh, let's start with Jude again. Well, first, excellent piece of work, David. Um, I appreciate this personally, and I'm sure Nigerians appreciate it. I think you said it all. Um, in a nutshell, Nigerians grit their teeth. Whatever has to be done to see that these elections hold and are credible, let's do it. Let's vote for the right person and let's take Nigeria back. Thank you. Goke. Well, it's been interesting. It's been a pleasure being on um, the panel. And it's nice to meet both Alaji and Jude. You know, um, well, for me, I think that what I said earlier would be what I would uh, be repeating, which is those of us that have a voice, those of us that have platforms, I think we need to advocate seriously to, to see that the elections hold. Our voices will count at this time in calming our people down and giving them a hope, you know, to aim at, uh, to give them a finish line to this thing, to help them understand that this situation will not pass these elections. Because once the elections are over, the justification that many people have for holding, this, uh, holding on to this policy will be, will be gone one way or another. And you will see there will be, it'll be a, a, a turn in that, in the tide in relation to this particular monetary policy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Alaji, you have the last word. Well, uh, once again, I'd like to sincerely appreciate uh, the opportunity to share knowledge and to thank, uh, you know, the people behind TNN. You guys are doing a good job. Well done and keep it up. Uh, as to Nigeria, I think there is no better last word oppresses than to stay, keep the flame, keep the passion, and be sure that this one too shall come to pass. Those who are chancing God, those who are daring God, the living God we all worship never ever goes to sleep. And he sees everybody and he will rescue us. And he will only rescue us if we also help ourselves, like the proverbial saying, heaven help those who help themselves. So let us be among those that heaven will help because we have helped ourselves. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you again and um, have a good evening, everyone. Audience, vote, vote, vote. Bye for now. All right, everyone. Good night. Bye for now. Bye.